Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is the great trellising video for 2021. We're going to go over about 25 different trellising designs that you can adapt for your garden. So this is ladder mesh. This is a masonry product. You can find it at Home Depot, some of them, by the rebar and the concrete, but you have to look for it. It's inexpensive and I just set up the different pieces. They come in 10 foot sections. The ones on the bottom I cut in half or cut into thirds and I just use the wire mesh to create arches that all of the sweet potato vines will be trellised up and it's just a great way to grow vertically. Coming inside, this is my new t-shirt. We'll pause here for the sponsor which is the Rusted Garden. These are now available at my seed shop if you're interested. Um, I will put the link in the video description but this is our new t-shirt and this is going to be around for a long time. I like the basic gray and the emblem that's right there. Now you're going to see all kinds of different trellises so I recommend that you get creative. Go to flea markets, garage sales, look around the big box stores, see what you can find because a lot of times you can get them more inexpensively if you repurpose them. So, and I'll talk about that as we go through. So first stop, standard metal T-post. I use them for all kinds of different things. They're about six bucks. I get them at Tractor Supply. They will last forever, so they're kind of worth the investment. And basically trellising a tomato plant straight up there. This is wire mesh, nice big space. This is used for concrete. So when you pour concrete down, you would lay this in there and it supports the concrete, but you can just repurpose it. Comes in a big section, just like this. I formed it to fit the curve of the raised bed, put the earth around it. This was going to be for cucumbers. I have an example of that coming up. But this is a tomato that grew wild, and I'm gonna let it grow. And I'm just weaving the vines through here. So that's one way to do it. Here's another example of the 10-foot ladder mesh, and it's just, rainbowed that way and this way you can secure it at the top and this is where I was growing peas I pulled them out so now there is a tomato plant in there with your standard tomato cage but that'll be plenty of support for a massive tomato plant that'll be growing in there and you can see how I used the ladder mesh for the peas and it did really really well we'll get to the orange piece in a second wanted to show you this one real quick. This is a pretty shallow container that's 22 gallons. That little teepee, three bamboo pieces tied off at the top, really, really works well in the containers. I highly recommend that. And this is supporting a bunch of peas. Now let's actually go over to Freetown Farm where I volunteer. I'll show you some trellis trellising options there and then we'll come back to my garden. This is the Grow It, Cook It garden over at Freetown Farm where I volunteer. I help design and build these beds and I want to just give you more examples of trellising. So we're reusing a lot of the materials that were already at the farm. These are peppers. You can do a weave. So these are just T-posts going through here and just taking string and going across and I will weave the peppers through there. That will give them enough support. So as soon as I find another post, I'm going to do the same thing for this group. Now sometimes like your bell peppers stay smaller. Um, maybe your poblanos get taller, so you will want to use this based on the size of the plant. Similar idea right over here. These are green beans, and we had some short T-posts that are great for really securing them lower, and then just did the same thing. Instead of T-posts, use wooden posts here, and the green beans will climb right up here. These are repurposed from an old shelving unit. They're aluminum, and they're just being used for the eggplant. Old structures are not only nice looking, um, but I think they're wonderful to add into the garden for trellising. And these were kind of falling apart. Just screw them right into the base of your frames if you have wood frames. And when you build your raised beds, you want to keep about a four foot space because most things are four feet wide. Great for the wheelbarrow, great for these structures. And I will have beans or other crops growing up through here repurposed rebar six foot pieces they're solid a little more expensive than wood typically but they're going to last forever and these are just green beans winding their way right up the rebar you can see other t-posts pieces of wood in there this is old rusted fencing you can buy this in rolls and they were pre-made in these circles and i think they were used to protect trees there's a lot of deer around here Rather than get rid of them or buying new stuff, 
These are being used for the cucumber plants. And I just dropped a circular cage around there. The space is wide enough. That's one thing. You want to make sure the space is wide enough if you're using it for something like that. And you can just bend the cucumber in and out. And it's a great way to trellis your cucumber plants. You could also use this for tomatoes. This cage is pretty lightweight, so shorter pieces of rebar or a wooden post, you just want to sink through there and, you know, hammer it in about a foot. That will keep this secure so that the cucumber plants or whatever you're growing in there doesn't knock the cage over. And you can see examples of those things that I used throughout this whole garden. Even the wood was repurposed. You know, just be creative. Look to see what you have around. Go to flea markets, garage sales. You can repurpose so much. And again, here's the cage, but this time I'm growing scalloped squash right up here. So this is a vining squash. I need to secure the bottoms with that rebar or wood stake like I was saying, but I'll be able to grow vertically. So vertical growing will save you, um, well, saves you a lot of space and it also helps you really manage pests and disease better in my opinion. These structures were donated, even though they're not being used as a trellis, you could set them up with wire, like it is right in there, all over, and you could grow cucumber plants up this, you could grow um, pole beans, peas, all kinds of different plants. So again, think create, creatively. You're going to find lots of objects um, that you could repurpose in so many ways. I'm not even sure what this was but it's being used to trellis watermelon up it. It's really solid. So when you're doing heavier crops, like maybe pumpkins or watermelons, a structure just like this works well. Maybe somebody built this. This was here when we got here, but they just drilled holes in it, rebar across. We leaned it into a nice little tent and we're gonna grow the watermelon right up the side. And here's some other uses of the metal fencing. Instead of keeping it, you know, that cylinder, we unwound it mostly straight, secured it to T-posts, and we're just weaving tomato plants up there. So you can set something up just like this, or over here on this side, and you can grow all kinds of different plants through the space, because again, make sure it's wide enough for your hand to get through. And this way, the fruit too, if you get really small holes, sometimes the fruit will grow in that hole and it will expand and it will get cut by the wire. If you have a nice space like this, that's not going to happen. Right now here we just have potatoes growing, so nothing that needs to be trellised. But this is a cool design too. T-posts on both ends. You can pick this up in the plumbing section. It's PVC. It's, you know, set up so that you could put, you know, something straight through here. So we just took a pole went all the way across to the other side, nice and solid. This is not gonna fall over. And you can drop string down, and then you can twist tomatoes around that string or other vining crops up the string, and it creates a really nice trellis. And it's really, really inexpensive. It's really just the cost of a couple of T-posts, two pieces of PVC, that look like that, and a pole long enough to connect whatever space you're working in. Your winter squash tend to vine more, like butternut and acorn, so you can grow them up really large trellises. Your summer squash, your yellow squash, uh, green zucchini, zucchinis, they tend to bush more. They will trail a little bit, but you can also grow them vertically. Maybe something about three feet tall again, that nice wide space, but you can kind of guide them upward, and it just makes it easier to get underneath, manage for pests and disease, rather than letting the leaves come all the way out here. Sometimes the plant falls over, and it just creates a haven for bugs. So you might want to just trellis your squash and zucchini up something just like that. Here's another section of trellises. And again, you can just create with what you have available. Just a couple of two by threes going up here, stringing it across, and that's for the pole beans. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Standard posts, when you're screwing them into a framed bed, 
you want to make sure you have wood that the screw can go deep into. If it was just into this piece from here to here, it's going to be a little bit wobbly and you want two screws going into there. Just secure it. And you don't want to put a screw in that goes in this way, comes out this way and leaves a point because at some point you're going to scratch your hand with it. So you want to make sure the screw tip stays in the wood, but it has to be secured to something solid. Now, a lot of times we use the one by ones or the two by twos for stakes. You can kind of think out of the box. We have a ton of these boards. It's a cucumber plant. So I secured them right down there with three screws into a nice four by four and it's nice and solid. And I really like that look. The cucumber plant will go straight up that and the width of the board allows you to really just trellis a cucumber right through the string. I mean, that's something I just made in between this video and I think it's really cool. But just keep in mind, you want your trellises to be really secure. If you're screwing them in with screws, at least two screws and don't let any points stick out. I don't want you to get cut. Here is my fabric pot garden. These are root pouches. I sell all these at my seed shop. So, basic tomato cage. I forget where I got these. I got them a long time ago. The bigger root pouches, the bigger fabric pots are deep enough to hold cages. So that's one thing to keep in mind is sometimes it's tricky of how do you support plants growing in fabric pots or containers. This one's deep enough, so I just sank this cage in. This is the concrete mesh that I was just showing you. I'm using it for bush beans and I'm using it for cucumbers and it fits nicely into this 150 gallon fabric pot. These bamboo posts are just hanging around there but you can get six foot posts and they're used for many different things. I'll show you as we walk through. Standard tomato cages, these are thicker gauge. You really want to get the quality heavier gauge tomato cages for the tomato plants. I'll show you how I use some of those wimpier wire ones as we walk through. But just drop them in, that's going to support the tomatoes. I like taking those bamboo posts I was telling you about, and that is a 20 gallon fabric pot. Drop one in each side, there's two determinate tomatoes in there, and I just TP it off, tie it off right there, and that's plenty of support for all kinds of different crops growing through there. And when we spin around and just take a look in there, of course you can use your fence, set up a strategy, you can see cucumbers growing up right there for trellising your different vine crops. Here's another section. This was a roll of just basic fencing, T-posts in there, and I just secure them in. And it creates a nice four foot square, well this is a rectangle, but it's four feet wide. And you can go as high as you want you can get T-posts in five feet, six feet, seven feet, eight feet, etc. And you can make the trellis, the wall, as high as you want. I have some acorn squash growing up that. This is the fabric, uh, I'm sorry, this is the concrete mesh secured to some T-posts. And that's how big it is when you buy it. You just buy a section just like that. That's going to be great for the butternut squash. In this section, I have these white wire racks. They are for closets. They're from Home Depot. They're 10 feet tall. They're not that expensive. These are on their third or fourth season and I just secure them to a mini T-post. You could use a wooden stake or whatever you want but secure it in and I have different beans beginning to trellis right up the closet wire rack and they will last a long time. I also took that ladder mesh and I secured two pieces together right at top and I made a big rainbow. Now it's kind of flimsy, it's okay, because it's secured to the closet rack, but you would want to drop a stake down in there. And you can kind of just put beans up there. It'll move, but it'll look kind of cool. My favorite cattle panel, that's about $25 a panel. I get it at Tractor Supply. I think they're 16 feet long, four feet wide, but it's one piece and a big rainbow across. I secure it by just dropping it down wherever you want it to go. And you can see a stake put in there. That keeps the cattle panel from pushing out. And you can just do that in different places. I have lots of examples of cattle panel as we walk through. This is your basic A-frame. 
I got this at a hardware store. There's no specific name to it, but if I pull this up, it just closes and you can just drop it wherever you want. Grow plants up one side, down the other. Some smaller closet wire rack secured to stakes and these are bush cucumbers that are going to be growing right in there. Across the back, stake, stake, stake. Those are eight foot T-posts, again from Tractor Supply. Some more wire racks and that just set up nine tomato plants. I'm growing beans up the wire racks. Also have fencing if I need it. But all those plants down there are taken care of. You can get PVC two foot and then two foot pieces of rebar. I'll show you an example in a second. But you just put the rebar in and then the PVC pipe will go right onto it and will keep it in place. Use the 10 foot piece of wire mesh, wove the PVC between it, and this will be great for a cucumber plant. It moves a little bit, but it'll be solid, or beans or whatever you want to trellis up there. So it makes, makes a nice little arch. Cattle panel used to create an arch in a four foot walking space. Three T posts, I think they were five foot T posts sunk in, and you just secure the cattle panel to that. Because it's so big, it wants to, let me get the shadow out of the way, it wants to spring out. So by putting in the T posts here, here, and here, the cattle panel is pushing that way, and it, these will keep them in place. I have cucumbers growing up that way. Various T posts, other kinds of posts, and then I just put wire across there, and I'm going to weave my tomato plants up there. You can use this for all kinds of different plants. I like this design, but it's not as uh, mobile as some of the other ones. Once you set it up, it sort of has to stay there. Your basic plastic covered pieces of metal, those posts are fine, nothing fancy. These are the wimpy tomato cages. They don't do much. So I like using them for peppers. Peppers need support. So if it's the, lo the thinner wired cages, I don't know if that's a lower gauge or a higher gauge, but anyway, it's skinnier wire. That's not gonna really hold a tomato plant, but they are great for pepper plants. And I just dropped one in each of my containers and I will trellis the peppers through that. Spinning around this way, this is just some funky creation. Be creative. When I pull the garlic out, I will be growing different things up there. And if you lift this up, you can see how I put the rebar in first, and then I just drop the PVC on. And this might be probably half inch PVC. You can get it on all kinds of heights. It's easy to cut. That is something I made out of railing that's all pre-made one side, that side and that side are pre-made. And I put hinges on it. And this is a heavy duty trellis made out of the railing for decks. You can pick that up at Home Depot and I'll be growing melons up that. If you're at a garage sale or something, you find a ladder, that ladder is $15. That will be used for trellising also. Wooden posts just staked into the ground. And then that 10 foot piece of ladder mesh was just weaved right through that. And I'll be growing beans up that most likely. You can go with your classic wooden stakes. One goes in the ground straight through, put the other ones at an angle through there and through there, and then tie them off. That's plenty sturdy <laughs> enough. That's even the right way to say that. And you can see the beauty of the green beans growing right up there. All right, let's go to some other places. Right over here, a piece of cattle panel dropped into the raised bed right there, raised bed right in there. And then when I added in the dirt, that secures that cattle panel. It's trying to spring out, but you can see it goes right into the raised bed. The sides are really high. That cattle panel is not going to go anywhere. And it moves a little bit, but that will never fall over. And just look at all the peas that it's helping take care of. I have to harvest all of those. From this side, I took two pieces of cattle panel and I just made a tunnel basically. And I'm growing cherry tomatoes up the side, on the left right there, and on the right right there. 
it's all gonna be cherry tomatoes growing up through there and for this one I designed it a little bit different I built this structure right here and just put two two by fours on the side and left a gap going all the way across that I could just drop the cattle paddle into if I want to disassemble it I just pop them out of there and it works really really well this got screwed into the raised bed there this is my asparagus t-post right over there t-posts are your best friend in the garden t-post right there and this is all metal wire piece there piece right there another piece down there and I just wrapped it around the outside of the asparagus pulled it tight and now the asparagus is being managed just like that you know obviously I did this when it was smaller but you set this up and then you just guide the asparagus through the gap a couple more uses of the a-frames they will open up as wide as you want and they will collapse flat so you can drop them in different places I gotta actually the melons are getting out of control gotta weave the melons up there so I'm weaving the melons up the a-frame trellis and then back down again and then they will trellis through this space once I clean it up a little bit if you need a really large trellising solution these are telescoping poles I got at tractor supply these are hop spines on here I think they get about 18 feet tall and you can telescope them down to about six feet anyway purple martin birdhouses would go on top of here these are about 40 bucks and that's what they're for but I repurpose them for growing my hop spines these are blackberries you can see the white string going across you know classic eight foot t-post in there string all the way across to the t-post right there and I just weave the brambles right through it keeps them in place and just look at all those blackberries all right one more garden this is the same fencing that I built a trellis out of these rectangles are a little bit small I can't get my whole hand through here but good enough if a cucumber was sitting in there you got to make sure you pop it out because it will expand and these bars will cut into it but this is a really um, functional size piece of fencing that you can use for different things those are potatoes growing in there here is my other garden and you can see another cattle panel arch that I built there stuff of course is trellising up the fence but beans over there are trellising up the cattle panel arch classic posts you just put in your posts I'm tying tomatoes up that also if I were going to grow beans or something I would just put string through here grow the beans up that but I wanted to show you like I picked this up if I didn't have a fence behind there this was found at a thrift shop for like three bucks and you can just sink whatever you find in different places right into the ground that's perfect just to give that cucumber plant some support it may need a bigger trellis later but smaller trellises really support the plants at the root system the first couple of feet and that will keep you from accidentally maybe pulling or breaking you know the plant off too close to the root tomato cages two of them in there for bush cucumbers the TP setup that I talked about earlier that works really well that's a 10 gallon container and then sometimes you have to kind of double up and I think we'll end here this is a stronger wire cage these are eggplant eggplant get really big so the wire cage will help manage the lower part of the eggplant keep it nice and secure but then you're going to need another post coming up because this plant will continue to grow so you can mix and match your different types of posts and cages and trellises to support your plants so I keep a barrel hole in the bottom so water doesn't fill in and I drop in sticks that look good you know broken stakes bamboo posts whatever I just throw in there I use these for trellising throughout the garden we'll use these often to grow peas up tree branches are great for peas Hope this gives you some idea of how you can inexpensively and creatively create trellises and supports in your garden. Just want to show you real quick over here are tea posts. I buy them in bundles just like that, have them all over the garden, and they just really help me set up and manage tomato plants. They're worth spending the extra six bucks to get a metal tea post from Tractor Supply. They're going to last forever. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com 
and I will put a link for the t-shirt in the video description. Thanks again.